Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about mid-side processing and we're going to be having a look at mid-side EQ in a bit more depth. This is really important and can really improve the fullness and the thickness of your track. So if you want to learn a bit more, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. Have you ever thought that when you're listening to a stereo signal, you're advised to sit in the middle of your monitors or speakers, but as you move your head across, you still hear sound? Or how when you pan instruments, you only hear the sound coming out one side, not in the centre of the sound? Well, with mid-side processing, we can alter this. Basically, a stereo signal has a centre channel and two side channels. And mid-size processing allows us to control and edit the centre channel separately from the side channels to achieve a fuller and richer sounding mix. This idea was invented in 1933 by Alan Blumline. His idea involved two microphones one cardioid polar pattern microphone and one figure of eight microphone. The cardioid mic is directed at the sound source, while the figure of eight is 90 degrees off axis in the same place. This means you get a really wide sounding stereo recording with an extremely focused center. And this was originally used for broadcasting, but we've now adapted it into the digital era. In a DAW, we split a stereo signal into two separate signals. The mid signal contains the sum of the information that is in both the left and right monitors, and the side signal contains the information that is unique to either the left or right monitors. It's important to know that the side really contains the information from the left and the phase inverted information from the right, which cancels out any common information. So we need to bear in mind that mid side processing will not always give us a perfect separation of the signals. And that's the mid-side processing that we know today. There are lots of different mid-side plugins that you can look at and use. For example, mid-side compression, which allows you to control the dynamic range of the center channel and the side channel separately. And there are also some mid-side delays. However, I think that the most commonly used and commonly heard one is mid-side EQ, which we're going to have a look at in a bit more detail now. The first thing we have to do is open the channel EQ plugin, but make sure we open it in dual mono. So when it first opens, it'll have an L and an R at the top here. This lets us EQ both the left and the right channel separately, which is not what we want. So we need to change that. We press the cog button here and use this drop down to choose mid-side instead. On this smaller menu, you can also choose to turn either the mid or side off to focus on each channel individually. This may help you get a clearer idea of what you're listening for with the mids and the sides. Then to get to the EQ page, you will press either mid or side. Personally, how I like to approach this is to go to the side page first and turn all the frequencies down just to focus on the mid channel. So listening to the middle of the stereo image, I feel like this track could do with a tiny boost around the 1 to 2 kHz and a tiny dip in the 300 to 500 Hz. Once I've done that, I go back to the side page and reintroduce those frequencies. So now I'm just listening again and re-evaluating what needs doing, as I've altered the mid-channel already. All I'm going to do to the side channel is clean it up a bit more and add a bit more sparkle. I'm going to put in a low cut to get rid of those lower frequencies that sound a bit muddy and then add a high shelf to add a tiny bit more sparkle. So now here's the track before and after the mid-side EQ. Hi. This has made a relatively small difference to the sound of the track. However, to me, it sounds a lot tighter and stronger and a lot less messy. Really just a lot more professional than before the mid-side EQ was applied. So that's the basics of mid-side EQ and a brief overview of mid-side processing. 
I think that this is a really powerful technique to use when it's used in the right way. And actually, in general, it's just a fascinating concept. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.